At the dawn of the 20th century, the Wright brothers were about to invent heavier-than-air flight, the cinema was just getting off the ground, and a technological revolution was starting that would change the world. This period saw the introduction of electric light, the icebox, the phonograph, the telephone, the vacuum cleaner, and the mass-produced motorcycle. And out of all the companies manufacturing two-wheeled motorized machines, three have more or less continuously been in business ever since. Royal Enfield 1901, Triumph 1902, and Harley-Davidson 1903 have produced motorcycles every year since. Okay, Triumph missed a few years, and some of the 80s were sketchy with changes in ownership, but close enough. And while Harley and Triumph are perhaps the better known names, it is Royal Enfield that is the oldest and now sells almost three times as many motorcycles as the other two combined. This company is on a tear right now, perhaps at the expense of the other two. How? Stay tuned, and if you enjoy this content, consider hitting that subscribe button, liking the video, and sharing it with other interested riders. And speaking of riding, you know, as much as we all love exploring places on our bikes, your safety on the road is not your only concern when traveling. One of the things that keeps us safe on the public networks we access in hotels and cafes is Surfshark VPN. Surfshark has military-grade encryption and protects your private data and email, whether sending or receiving, browsing, online banking. It'll even notify you if your data gets leaked and prompt you to change passwords to prevent breaches. Your Surfshark account can be used on unlimited devices and across platforms. Surfshark will never collect your data, and if you decide it's not for you, there's a 30-day money-back guarantee. The best option is the 24-month plan, and if you scan the QR code on the screen or use the link below and enter my promo code SPOKES, you'll get 83% off the price. Wow. And three extra months. So next time you hit the road, you can enjoy every moment knowing that Surfshark has you covered. So Royal Enfield Triumph and Harley, along with Indian, are the oldest motorcycle manufacturers in the world. But Indian doesn't count as it realistically didn't exist as a major manufacturer for some six decades and just recently made a comeback. Triumph is the quintessential British motorcycle, and while some commenters may note that technically the company went out of business in 1983, it was immediately bought by John Bloor and continued to make a limited number of Bonnevilles while Bloor set about building a new factory in Hinkley and designing new models and frames. The first modern Triumphs rolled off the assembly line in 1990 for the 1991 model year, and by 2000 the company broke even and became a well-established brand with a mix of suitably modern motorcycles and a line of heritage models that pay homage to Triumph's rich history. Harley-Davidson, in contrast, is the quintessential American motorcycle. Whereas most Triumphs tend to have a standard feet underneath you riding position, most Harleys cruise, feet forward, seat height low. Perhaps no name in motorcycling is better known or as iconic as Harley-Davidson with countless appearances in movies, TV shows, posters, and popular culture in general. Harleys are associated with rebellion, freedom, independence, and danger, and having ridden many and owned one, I can tell you that they ride and sound like no other motorcycle on the planet. But Royal Enfield is a classic name in itself, and the company has produced many things including the iconic Lee Enfield rifles which were standard issue weapons for many of the Commonwealth armies fighting in World War I. Besides that, the company also produced cycles and cycle parts. Curiously, it produced a quadricycle in 1899, and its first actual motorcycle, basically a bicycle with a 239cc engine, in 1901. Recently, a perfect replica was made and it's one of the coolest machines out there. Too bad it's not for sale. During the First World War, Royal Enfield won large contracts to build 225cc single and 425cc V-twin two-stroke motorcycles for the British and Russian armies and even produced a sidecar model with a machine gun mounted on it. Royal Enfield squeaked through the depression and again got big military contracts to produce bikes for the army in World War II. One of these was the 125cc WDRE model which was designed to be dropped by parachute with airborne troops. In 1948, Royal Enfield introduced an updated version of its bullet which eventually became the longest running unchanged motorcycle model in history. This happened because in the mid-50s the design was sold to India and production of the bullet continued even after the British Royal Enfield company went out of business. 
In the 1950s and 60s, Royal Enfield introduced more iconic models like the Meteor, Super Meteor and the Interceptor. A true superbike of its time, capable of a top speed of 105 miles per hour or 175 kilometers per hour. Unfortunately, as with Triumph and BSA, the Japanese invasion flooded the market with reliable, technologically superior, reasonably priced motorcycles and Royal Enfield went out of business in 1970. But remember that in the mid-50s, the Indian government had purchased licensing and tooling to produce the bullet for its army and later the civilian market. And the bullet became an Indian icon, an aspirational motorcycle much like Harley-Davidson in the United States. Royal Enfield continued producing essentially the same bullet into the 2010s, by which time it was hopelessly out of date. But it was around this time that the company started an aggressive modernization and expansion, opening offices around the world and expanding its international dealership network. First, the Himalayan was introduced, an important model given the recent popularity of adventure motorcycles. Then, a new and very modern 650cc twin-cylinder engine was designed and put to work in a new Interceptor and Continental GT which exploded onto the scene in 2019 and immediately became the best-selling mid-size motorcycles in the UK. Yes, not only outselling the Triumph Bonnevilles, but all Triumph models combined. Royal Enfield then redesigned their 350cc single and introduced a new Meteor and Classic, with a new 350 bullet to be unveiled soon. Not slowing down in the least, the company built a new Super Meteor Cruiser and introduced it to rave reviews at EICMA last November. And if rumors are to be believed, a new 450cc liquid-cooled Himalayan is to be introduced before the end of 2023. This is the model I'm most excited about as it is rumored to produce about 40 horsepower, looks to have high quality suspension and could be decently light. I don't think it'll be KTM Enduro 690 light, but it won't be KTM Enduro 690 expensive either. And if Royal Enfield can get the weight down close to the 400 pound mark, a lot of ADV riders, including me, will take serious note. And that's not all. A 650cc road-oriented Himalayan is rumored to be in development around the existing twin-cylinder motor. A motor so overbuilt that many speculate it could be successfully scaled up to larger displacements. Incidentally, the YouTube channel Fortnite performed testing on the first service oil from all major manufacturers' new bikes to see which oil came out the cleanest. Believe it or not, Royal Enfield had the least gunk in their oil after the first service, way less than Triumph and Harley, which lends credence to their claims that their manufacturing and tech have greatly improved. So now we have the three oldest companies on the planet vying for your dollars and offering some retro-themed machines. But which one is the most successful, you might wonder? Well, let's see. Sales numbers for 2022 were just published, and despite the recent introduction of several modern high-performance models, Harley-Davidson sold just over 178,000 motorcycles last year. This is a bit of a shock, because the motor company used to routinely break the 200,000 mark before the pandemic, and in 2006, its best year, it sold 350,000 units. The low numbers may have something to do with the plan to turn Harley into a premium brand and the progressive elimination of the less expensive models in favor of far more pricey options. Yes, the margins on each unit sold are larger, but with the number of units sold plummeting, the future does not look bright for Harley-Davidson, especially since the company has no entry-level affordable bikes on offer for younger riders. Triumph has a good mix of modern and classic styled machines, all of which sport high-performance liquid-cooled engines. The company has been growing steadily since its resurrection in the early 90s and posted its best sales figures to date in 2022, moving 78,000 pricing machines. It does have more affordable models than Harley-Davidson, but has been positioning itself as a premium brand, and its prices have been on an upward trajectory. However, unlike Harley, it does have models like the Trident and Street Triple that attract younger buyers into the showroom and hopefully build brand loyalty. So with Harley and Triumph selling 178 and 78,000 bikes respectively in 2022, how does Royal Enfield compare? Hold on to your hats, because Royal Enfield moved 703,000 motorcycles in 2022, up from 550,000 in 2021. You heard right. Royal Enfield increased its sales last year by twice as many motorcycles as Triumph sold in its best year. 
Yes, those bikes are not as expensive as Harleys or Triumphs, and yes, the margins on each unit are smaller, but an increasing number of those motorcycles were sold in the UK, Europe and North America, and the year-over-year -year rate of growth is staggering. To what can we attribute Royal Enfield's success? 1. The Indian market is the largest motorcycle market in the world, a huge advantage for Royal Enfield which can, by the way, also claim British roots. Second, production costs in India are relatively low, allowing Royal Enfield to bring its bikes to market at very competitive prices. And finally, the other thing that keeps costs down is the simplicity of its motorcycles, something I harp about often on this channel. Modern motorcycles are marvels of technology and many sports six-axis IMUs with lean sensitive traction control and ABS, multiple rider modes, variable valve timing, iPad displays, adaptive cruise control, and all kinds of other whiz-bang technology. And don't get me wrong, progress is fantastic, but it drives up the cost of motorcycles that feature these gadgets and puts them out of the reach of many price-sensitive consumers. Consumers who are starved for solidly designed affordable motorcycles that look and sound good and have a claim of being the oldest brand on the planet. And that's where Royal Enfield is a danger to both Harley and Triumph. Triumph because the current Interceptor with its air-cooled 650cc engine is actually the best current representation of a classic British motorcycle in terms of looks and performance and undercuts the least expensive Bonneville by thousands. Harley because the Super Meteor which sports the same 650cc engine is a stylish affordable entry-level cruiser. And as I said before, the engine can be scaled bigger. Japanese manufacturers tried to muscle in on Harley's territory with their classic looking cruisers in the past but lacked the legit heritage of building such motorcycles. Royal Enfield has that heritage, has its US headquarters in Milwaukee just down the street from Harley Davidson, and now has a pretty sweet entry level cruiser to attract younger riders. And those younger riders will age, make more money, and will move up to larger models just as Royal Enfield introduces them. For those who think that Royal Enfield is no threat to Harley, wait a decade when Harley is down to selling 100,000 bikes a year and Royal Enfield is selling a couple of million and see if that's still true. Now modern Harleys are pretty nice but a lot of them are north of 20,000 bucks US and if Royal Enfield were to introduce an 1100cc Meteor for under $12,000 I know that a lot of cruiser riders would jump at owning one. Me? I want to see that Himalayan 450. So Royal Enfield's future certainly looks bright. The company is growing fast and all of its offerings look pretty impressive, if not in technology then in style and value. Over the next few years we'll see if that counts for more than high tech. Judging by yearly sales over the last few years it certainly has, and I guess that this is the main thesis of my argument. When you look at wildly successful bikes like the Royal Enfield Interceptor or even my own Yamaha Tenere 700, the thing that stands out about them is their simplicity and reasonable price. Triumph still has some motorcycles like that, and Harley doesn't. But all Royal Enfields are like that, and that's what makes the brand so attractive. So we'll see what the future brings, but I predict that Royal Enfield will hit a million yearly sales soon. And these won't be 50cc mopeds, but large and desirable motorcycles by international standards. I think that's a pretty safe bet. So what Royal Enfield is your favorite, and why? Or maybe is it a Harley or a Triumph? Please share your top picks in the comments below, and whatever you ride, ride safe.